Hello fellow haters of the blue and welcome to my channel and also welcome to Heavy Contrast Marines, a series where I try to paint a space marine to the highest level possible using contrast paints and highlights. And in this episode we are tackling the Iron Hands and we are doing a very pre heresy paint job using just metallic paints for a black metallic armor. So let's get cracking. This one is a bit unusual because this is the first time we are starting with a metallic base coat. In this case it's a spray of lead belcher. And before we start adding any contrast paint, I'm going to paint all the rubber parts of the armor with Corax White. Try not to get this on the armor itself. If you get some on the other part like the leather, that doesn't really matter at all. Our Cortex White undercoat is now completed and I'm going to start applying contrast to those white parts and I'm using Grief Charger Grey. I use Grief Charger Grey because this will add a bit of blue tint to the white and darken it a bit and that will serve the purpose of giving us a more richer, colder looking black. Don't be afraid with this, just try not to hit the armor, but if you do, just correct it with lead belcher. And now, with all our preparation work done, we're going to take Black Templar and apply it all over the model. When you apply the contrast paint, apply it, move your brush in the direction you want the shadows to go, and if you see on the side pulling, absorb it with the brush, and move on. Work in sections, that way you will find it way easier to spot problems before they are too big to deal with. I will apply this heavily because I want it to be really black. Black Templar is quite a forgiving paint in, for this application because it won't show too splotchy if you make a mistake being so dark. Our coat of black temper is now completely dry and time to move into base coat in other areas that we will shade together later. And first of all, it's all Isis chest eagle and the shoulder trims using grey knight steel. And I'm also base coating all the parts that will be regular steel using Iron Breaker. This is mainly the metal on the, on the gun, but also a couple of tubes and stuff like that. With the other metallic areas now base, base coated in their particular colors, you can see the gun here, how different it is from the lead puncher. I'm going to start highlighting all the armor. For this I'm using Iron Warriors. Just do an edge highlight all across the model. This will look almost non-existent, but trust me, it will make sense and it will, you will notice it once everything is done. A 
as I usually do. I usually do a ball made now a glaze with the same iron warriors and do the spot highlight on the top of the knees and the top of any other rounded parts of the armor. Our highlight of Iron Warriors is now completed. Now I'm going to move into a thinner edge highlight using Lead Belcher. And again, in the rounded surfaces, we want to make another glaze, smaller than the Iron Warriors one. Just like that. Our highlight of, of Lead Belcher is now completed. Then going to do the last highlight on the black armor, and for that I'm using the Stormhole Silver. What I will do with the Stormhole Silver is just do dots inside of the spot highlights on the knees and small lines or dots in the top surfaces. And also in all the corners. Our final highlight with the Stormhorse Silver is now completed. And now I'm going to correct some lines that I think are too thick. For example, here, that edge highlight is too thick. And this one, and a couple more. Metallic paints are really hard to work with. So uh, this is inevitable. What I will do is take Black Templar and just paint it just over the line. Don't try not to paint it over the, the previous Black Templar. Just take it and paint it over the thick metallic line where it's not even all you think is too thick. I finished uh, trimming and perfecting all the edges, what I messed up. And now I'm going to do a, a key step for this scheme to work. Our main problem, as you may see, is that the edge highlights shine a lot while the main body of the armor is quite matte. And to unify this, tone down the highlights so they are more in line with what we want, and also shade all the armor that is not black. I'm going to use a mix of three parts contrast medium and one part black templar. What I will do with this is apply it all over the black armor. It will be a wash over the regular metallics, as you can see, and I will apply it over the black armor, not touching the rubber parts, more as a glaze, but I'm not really caring about that because we won't really see. 
this will also help defining any place where we messed up with our highlights and went into the panel lines this will take those panel lines back for us again try not to hit the rubber parts that's very important our wash with the black templar on the contrast medium is now completed and dry and you can see how much it has done to tone down the armor and unify all the finishes it's looking really good really happy with the result and now to highlight all the other metal areas i'm going to use a stonehold silver i'm just going to do an edge highlight here With that last highlight, our metallic armor is now completed. And now I'm going to finish all the rubber joints. For this, I'm going to highlight them using Fenrisian Gray. Now for our, for our final highlight on the rubber parts, I'm going to use Ulthu and Gray. What I will do is just make a small dot in the middle of our previous highlight. And with that last highlight done, the armor actually is 100% completed. We just need to do the final details and to be able to tackle them, I'm going to base coat his face and the leather using gray sear and the casing on his weapon using Corax white. Our base coats are now done, including everything, his arms, the purity seal, and the... In, including the purity seal and the weapon casing in Corax White. And I'm going to tackle the leather now. For this I'm using Psycho Brown, 
and I'm just going to apply a layer all over the leather parts. While the cycle brand dries, I'm going to apply dark old flesh mixed with contrast medium in a one to one ratio to his face. While all the contrast paints dry on his on his main body, I'm going to paint the gun casing and use an apothecary white. When you apply this, be very careful not to hit any of the metallic areas because this will leave a grey line there and we don't want that. Apart from that, just slap it on onto all the parts that will be white. The Psycho Brown is now dry and then going to edge highlight using Gorfor Brown. Along with edge highlight in all the leather, I'm going to make it look old and weird. And for this I'm just doing random slashes dots and so on. Still using Gorthor Brown. We finish our highlight and distortion of the leather using Gorfor Brown. I'm going to move into the next highlight. This is Bane Blade Brown. And I'm just essentially going to do the same. Each highlight covering this area. I'm also going to do the small dots where any slash comes into contact with the edge and also add some more slashes and dots towards the edge. Those new slashes don't have to be the same. In fact, if you do different slashes that will create more depth and will increase the realism of our leather work. And now to finish our leather work, I'm going to use Recepti Bone and I'm just going to do small dots in the corners of each pouch. And if lines intersect, I'm going to add dots.
With the leather work now finished, I'm going to move into his weapon because if I finish the white parts, I can actually glue them all together and that will make it much, much more easier to work with. And now what, I, what I'm going to do is do a recess shade on the white parts using Grief Charger Grey. Just take pure Grief Charger Grey and deposit it in all the panel lines, rivets, etc. And for our next step on the gun, I'm just going to edge highlight with pure white. With the weapon casing now done, I'm going to move into the purity seal, starting with the wax, and for the wax I'm using Bolopus Pink. The Bolopus Pink is dry and I'm going to shade the parchment. For this I'm using a mix of one part wildwood with three parts contrast medium. While I have this mix in my palette, I'm also going to use it on his face. I'm going to use it to shade under his eyes, around his mask, and in any of the points where the flesh meets the metallic plate on the back. Also, all around the metallic dots he has on his face, those kind of details. The wash of wildwood with contrast medium is dry, and I'm going to highlight the parchment using palette witch flesh. As you can see, I'm just doing a simple edge highlight, picking out all the edges and the tops of the folds. For a final highlight on the parchment, I'm using pure white. And I will just do dots in the corners and in the just in the edges of the folds. Now we're going to highlight the wax. For this I'm using Shakti Bone and I'm just going to do very small dots. Now to finish off the purity seal, I'm taking pure wildwood and I will just do a small squiggles on lines to simulate the script.
With the purity signal done, I'm going to move into his face. And after all the shading that we have done, there's only one more thing to do to highlight it, and that is using palette with flesh. And apply some final highlights. We want to apply this palette with flesh on the top of the cheeks. lower eyelid and pick out the brows and any any wrinkles that he has As you can see, I'm not going to the back of his head because I will do a stubble effect right after this highlight. I will just probably do another pass of this highlight to really accentuate it and then move on to do the stubble. With the skin now finished, I'm going to move into the stubble. For this, I'm using Pterodon Turquoise, highly diluted using Lamium Medium. I can't tell you a proportion, it's just a little bit. It's in Lamium Medium, you can see how thick it is here and you're just going to glaze this where I want the stubble to be and immediately you can see how realistic nice the stubble effect this is giving us don't let it pull because then it will turn into blue and you don't want that you just want a thin very thin layer over the area you want to be stubble now before tackling the last detail which will be the plasma coils i'm going to do another small detail first which is the red lights and lenses that he might have for this i'm using Flesh series red. And just apply this over any lens or light that he might have. Once the, the flesh series red is dry, I'm going to highlight the lower part of the lenses using Luganath orange. And finally, I'm just going to do a small dot of white on the other corner. And now at last, it's time to move into the coils. For this, I'm using a mix of two parts contrast medium with one part pterodon turquoise. With the first layer now mostly dry, I'm going to apply a second one, this time concentrating on the ends of the coil. Just like that. With our layers of pterodon turquoise now dry, I'm going to highlight the coils. For this I'm using a full on grey. And I will pick up the edges of the coil. I will go smaller as I approach the edges. And now for a final step, I'm going to take white and just do a small dots on the top of each coil. I'll try to make the dots smaller as I approach the end 
and of course never really touching the end coil. And with that last step, our model is finished. I took the liberty to finish his base. If you want to see how I did it, go check this video. So, as always, I really hope you like this video, and I'll catch you in the next one. Bye! Do you want to decide what I paint in the channel, or have any recipe that you want me to make for you? Then consider Patreon. I have a Patreon account, you have the link in the description below. Patreon helps me do all the cool projects that I want to make and help me improve the quality of my videos. Don't be afraid, no content will ever be hidden behind a paywall, but it's a nice way to help me and you will get something back for your generosity. As I said guys, thank you very much for watching, a special thank you to Kevin Sulars and Kid Lenard for being the coolest persons on the planet. Be like these fine folks, join my Patreon and take control.